Welcome to the wonderful world of wellness with Dr. Andy Mencia. This medical program heard from 7 to 7.30 each Saturday right here on WSBR 740 AM is brought to you by the Adult and Geriatric Center under the medical direction of geriatrician Dr. Andy Mencia. Good morning. So do you remember who I am? Uh, uh, <laughs> me, oh, yeah, because long-term memory is still intact. Is now, that true? Yeah. Is, it's a, talk, talk to me about Alzheimer's, Doc. Oh, well, yeah. this is Aunt Dr. Andy Mencia, <laughs> and, and here's Ina. And, and Ina we, Leskovic. Dobre utra, Inuchka. Dobre utra. That means hello, <laughs> She's so happy. good morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was being funny when I said that, but... But um, sometimes you want to forget. What, yeah. So what really is? Why is it? Why is it that Alzheimer's that people can remember a uh, long time ago, but they can't remember now? What's that just it's, happening? Uh, what is that? You know, it's interesting about the brain is that there's a lot to be learned about the brain. We know so much about the heart. We have learned so much about the kidney. I wrote a book on the kidneys. Yes, yes we have to bring you know, that back. We, uh, we know a lot about so many organs in our body. But the brain is so complex. You know, the psyche of the brain. You know, the brain has different functions. Just like the, the kidney has different functions. You know, it has to do with developing blood cells for, to prevent anemia. It had to clean the blood and produce the waste material called urine. Uh, so there are different functions to each organ. Your pancreas is not only to produce insulin. It produces other uh, enzymes and, and chemicals that have to deal with digestion. So every organ has different function. And the brain has different function. You know, the nervous system go and... Uh, influence your entire body. All the organs are influenced by the brain. But it's also the psyche that have nothing to do with that. It's a different function of the brain. And then there is the memory, the learning. So just like an uh, animal uh, lower than human can learn to do acts and to recognize their, their master, uh, people learn through experience. And some people forget. Uh, other people learn by reading. So I was not there when Hitler was killing the Jews. But we learn from history, if you do believe the history book, that the Jews were massacred by Hitler and his uh, white supremacist group. And when we see what's going on here uh, with the, the way our country is being torn apart, by hatred, uh, some people want to forget. <laughs> they don't want to uh, remember. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that's very true. And I, you know, like but, I wrote in one in one of my quotes, you know, it takes courage to to stand up, like many Jews stood up and died for the inhumane treatment that Hitler and his white supremacists did on those people. You know, who was the first country? that had the courage or the, the uh, well, Hitler called them ignorant, but the first country that had the courage to say, we take the Jew. Who was that? Well, the United States was debating, like we always do. France was debating because they didn't want to get in trouble with Germany. <clears throat> Dominican Republic used to have a... a, a uh, Dictator. And I remember when they that. told the dictator that this is going on in Trujillo. In, Trujillo. I remember that. And Trujillo was the first man to say to, no. to the Jew, come to my land. No, I yes. did not know that. And that's why there's a lot, there's a huge Jewish community in Dominican Republic. Trujillo in Argenti did that. Then Argentina did it, then Brazil did it. Then the United States, we have no choice, but we have to do it. You know? <clears throat> so. For my brother Jew, Jews out there, yeah. my bro, my black brothers that yeah. that talk about Martin Luther King. Yes, what's going on in this country? I hope we all have courage to stand against it. 
Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you talked about that. I mean, you know, because you know, not, this is boiling in so many people. I know that. You know, I we know. see so many people come to my office with tears and crying. You know, we fear of what's going to happen. You know, and uh, it's not minority. It's white people, it's black people. You know, one of my Jewish patients, until I open up. He have fear of, of speaking about it. Yeah, you know, there's no need to have no fear. We live in this country, and and if we need to go into a civil war yeah, to regain I, what we have gained so far, you know. Yeah, <clears throat> I I understand all that. And as a physician, it's interesting that you you know you you talk about this because we always I'm always telling you human the the psychosocio economical aspect yeah. of healthcare. Yeah, you always do that. Always, I there know. is a psychological component. There's a so, there's a social component. There's a biological component. And doctors sometimes we think that you know it's a biological component only. No, it's all three of them come together. Even if we're treating a headache. <laughs> you know, and but you always have done, you always felt this and way. And for so. those people that think if I put my head in the sand, because sometimes your blood pressure is high, and you say, "Hmm, if I put my head in the sand, it will go away." And if somebody tell you, you know, you have the beginning of diabetes, if I put my head in the sand, it will go away. But let me tell you something: you are living within white supremacists, and if you put your head in the sand, it will not go away. White supremacists. Are doctors like me? They are lawyers. <clears throat> they are architect. Uh, okay, are, but wait a minute. I'm gonna stop. Even, wait, wait, but, wait, but, wait! Don't stop okay. me yet. Don't stop me yet. And I think <laughs> He's on a are, roll. <laughs> and I think they are even president now. Yeah, yeah, of course. And, you know. But so, this is my question: What makes someone like that? Uh, You've been in psychology, so really, is yeah, it the family like, heritage? What is it that makes people? You know. well, well, you know, uh, for somebody like Donald Trump, it would be easy to become a white supremacist because he grew up in a bubble. See, I had to serve in the army. And during the time that I served was when blacks was becoming officers. Women were being accepted into the armed forces, full, full force and mm. integrated army. Mm. So my job was to do human relations, bringing white people and blacks and women. Mm -hmm. And Good sometimes it was the black accepting the women as a co-fighter. Yes. And other time it was the white accepting a black as a general or as a captain. So bringing people to be together to respect the rank. When, when Bill, so so right. I didn't grow up in that bubble like uh, Donald Trump. Right. He grew up with money in a bubble and he makes sure that his family stay within that bubble. He's an insecure man. That's why when he took office, he needed all his family around him. You know, just like Hitler was. Right? Hitler would kill whoever was close to him yeah. that, that make him feel uncomfortable. Not that you betray him. You just make him feel uncomfortable, you were gone. But but let's let's okay well let's go back lower <clears throat> now let's talk about the people who marched do they were a lot of them are I mean whether they have jobs whether they're professionals <clears throat> they didn't look professional to me but what makes someone is it the family that they grew up with to, to, to be a Ku Klux Klan <clears throat> or to be a Nazi what where, where does that the, all come the, from the what is that the demonstration and the march I address now the the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court need to make an amendment on the freedom of speech. I agree. In the United States of America, you have the freedom of speech, but you do not have the freedom of being degrading and offensive to other people that have been accepted into this country. I agree with I you. I don't care if they are Mexican. Yep. I don't care if they are Jews, blacks. Uh, Chinese, you do not have the right to offend any of those people because you are different. Nobody should have that right. Otherwise, white people should march if no white people forget about super rich people. Should have a column in the paper talking about 
the poor people how stupid they are. Yeah. You know? So I think, you know, the freedom of speech to offend others yeah. intentionally. Yeah. Because that's what, you know, if you yeah. look if you look at the video of how this was portrayed on the first day on Friday, you know, Jews, you are not welcome. Jews, don't take my job. Black, don't take my job. This is no freedom of speech. I'm wondering how, I don't know if I've seen too much about what Israel is <clears throat> thinking about this, Israel, because um, Net- Netanyahu, uh, apparently he's he's having a problem now with this too, because uh, the Jews... Tell him to speak up, yeah, Demi. Yeah, I yeah. don't care who's having yeah, a problem. Right. Don't be afraid to speak exactly, up. Exactly. Because that's the problem. Yeah, you know, people is. having a problem accepting the, the massacre of the Armenian. But because we need Turkey to fight in Europe, we all of the president that have attempted to recognize the massacre of the Armenians, yes. the Turkish president have to make only one phone call. If you dare, I shut the door on you. Yeah, that's a very good point. That's true. You know, well, I'm mean, going to even, you know that I am not Christian, but I have to tell you when I think about what happened, and I don't know that much history, during the uh, the Christians and the lions. Why, why did they put the Christians in, this, this was, these were the Romans, weren't they, the uh, Romans? I grew up Buddhist, the, so I don't... The, <laughs> the Christians and the lions, I mean, yeah. no, but remember that yeah, that's but how the they, history, they yeah. because they saw, oh, they hated Christians. They because, hated right? Christians, yeah. And they, they had lions going. So it's really man's inhumanity to man. You know, that's I remember really among is. Christian in the history, there were time where the Jehovah Witnesses, because they were different from the other Christian, they were being killed. And it was a just killing because they were different. Yeah. Well, let's bring you back to being a and physician. And to the white supremacists, including yeah. uh, Steve Banner and and uh, and uh, uh, the president number forty-five. If you, God forbid, have an accident and lose blood, I'm going to talk to you guys like a doctor. If you lose blood. You're going to end up in a hospital. Unless you are a uh, Jehovah Witness, you're going to end up getting transfusion. <laughs> I know where you're going with that. It guess, probably could be from anybody, right? Get, well, get who, no, but get who come up with, a, with the idea of how to do transfusion from one human to another? I don't know who. A black doctor. No kidding. A black doctor. And that black doctor, the history of the United States says that that black physician was involved in a car accident and was bleeding, and they were refusing to transfuse him because he was black. No kidding. Until somebody brought up the fact that, hey, man, this guy invented the procedure no of transfusion. kidding. Well, you yeah. are filled with a lot of facts, sir. Well, I was a human relations counselor, so I have a lot to teach to, from the president on down. That, so, you know, what they are doing is going to affect not only my kids, but my grandkids, you know. I'm, <clears throat> yeah, I know. I understand. But wait, I want to ask you a question. So what if someone came into your office and you knew that they were a white supremacist or somebody who was really... I treat them like a patient. Yeah, I know you would. Because they can no, be... I understand. Because, you know, I get patients that come to me that they are crazy. Yeah. They have crazy thoughts, and they steal my patients. Yeah. I have to treat them. I have to help them out. Yes, yes. So as a doctor, I'm not a, I'm not a judge, and yeah. I am no God. I'm not here to judge my patient. I, I treat them the way they deserve to be treated. That was Charles R. Drew, the doctor who invented transfusion. <laughs> Charles R. Drew. There he there is. There is. Okay, Charles R. Drew. Thank you, Richard. That, yes. that, that is really great. Well, you're... I know that you're suffering as a physician about this whole thing, as I am suffering with a lot of this. Well, who, I am are, suffering as a, as a human being. Yes, I know that. I, I understand, but you're a physician too. So, yeah. so help all the people who are listening to you who are also suffering. Speak up. Uh, okay, speak I up. I want people to speak up to your congressman. Listen, we have a system in this country, and it's to me 
one of the best system in the world when it comes to politics. I don't care if you are a temporary resident, if you are a permanent resident, if you are a U.S. citizen by naturalization, or you are a born U.S. citizen. All of us have rights. Use them. When we speak up and people start getting phone calls and email and texts, then they follow to Congress. And then Congress followed to the Supreme well, we're Court. See, well, we're seeing this happen, though, when they come. They're, the town halls. But I, I'm going to go back and put your physician hat on. Um, how are you helping your patients who come in? I understand what you just said. Are Are you having to put people who are very emotional, let's say people who were in the I Holocaust, have, or people, how, how, how are you handling this? Well, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, my patients that are reviving, they are going through... Uh, extreme uh, panic attacks, insomnia, blood pressure going up, loss of appetite, and, you know, they are frustrated. People are frustrated. And afraid. And afraid so what, of the what, future. So what Fear of the future. You know, let me tell you, if you have money and you're going to invest and you say the United States, you know, is such a stable economic country, if I invest here, I would be so happy. Go and invest in a very unstable third world country. You're going to be in fear. You won't sleep until you see your money back because the fear of uncertainty. And what is being created in this country now is the uncertainty of the future. So what do you give a person to help them so that their blood pressure isn't high and what uh, I mean, what, are you doing anything? Well, what well, are you, you know, doing? this is not something that medication is the answer. Meditation? I try not to medication. I know, meditation, but meditation is, uh, you know, conversing, uh, talking to your loved one, uh, even if you disagree, uh, talking to other people, uh, taking part in, in social event, so our voice can be heard. You know. When you go to your synagogue, you go to church, it's a beautiful place of gathering. You know, talk to your leader in your synagogue and your church and your other place of prayer and talk to your leader and say, let's sit down and talk about this. I mean, you know, let me tell you, we did it for 9-11, right? It affected us as a, as a nation. Oh, yeah, the 9-11 Psychologically was so bad oh, yeah. that still for those of us who live that, Think when September 11 come each year. It's not because we are afraid they're going to do it again. It's because all of those feelings come back to us. Have you seen Ooh. the memorial? I was in New York and I saw the memorial. I can't. Oh, I cannot you, because you can't. One, of my, one of my best friends that was here having dinner with me, and I even remember the restaurant. I have not been able to go back to that restaurant because of He was of killed him. in this? He was here with his wife. And I think it was three kids, three or four kids he had. And the kids are now adult and, and teenagers. But uh, I remember going and uh, sit down with him and his mom, who was my patient too. And we have dinner. And the wife say, we don't have to go now. We still have a few more days of vacation. I say, no, no, I have to go back. And we are talking during the dinner. I have to go back because I have work to do. So he went one day earlier than, than, than his time was to go to work. And he died. Uh, oh, my goodness. So, yeah, towers. so it's, it's <clears throat> terrible. So, you know, well, I cannot I did, go and see the memorial. Well, I did do it. And I must tell you, it was a beautiful memorial only because every name is there. And you can put your hand on that name and they will be there forever. Yeah. Um, you know, we do have, just getting back to this other... We have a lot of Holocaust museums, and I don't know if you've seen the one in New York and all over. I've been to a lot of them, and they show the shoes. They show all the things that they've had. So that's why I'm, you know, I'm very disturbed right, right. now. But I'll tell you what I've been doing. And I Maybe. wonder, you know, I mean, uh, it, it, we cannot blame anybody. But to tell you the truth, you know, and you wonder, you say, wait, is that freedom? 
you wonder, you know, we have so many people that die, all religions, uh, all races, and there were people saying, wow, what a great uh, piece of land to build something nice like a hotel to make money. There were people, you know, greedy people out there trying to make money, say, maybe I can open another building over here with my name on it. <laughs> well, let, let, me, let, me, let me move this somewhere. So I, near, I tell you what I've been doing. I've been going to movies, good movies. Yeah, good. I, good. I you are watching at home, but I'm going out to movies because it's helping me. Remember, I'm still mourning my husband. Yes. So yes. I have quite a few things, but I, I love my dog, but I go to movies or I watch movies and that really gets me through a lot. And maybe people, I mean, good movies, not those kinds, you know, with lots of the, you know, guns and all that. There are beautiful movies out there yeah. that you can go and that you can see and it makes you and feel that, good. And that's important. See what you are doing. See, in my case, you know, I'm so active with lectures beside, you know, my full schedule, seeing patients, seeing patients at the Boynton office. By the way, I'm going to be twice a month now at the Boynton office. Yeah, Dr. Really... Eckel is also twice a month. When there. are you, go you going? going <clears throat> Starting this? next month. This next month, month coming up. Okay. I'm going to be going twice a month there. So then we're going to have more of a presence at the Boynton office also. And you're going to have but, to... uh, you know, the work that I'm doing, the lecturing, I'm always lecturing. If uh, and, and this is my message to, to our audience. If after what happened with this president and, and what he's... Uh, promoting, you have dropped on your activity, you are being affected. If you are able to maintain your activity, more power to you. Don't drop the amount of activity you are doing because then he is winning, you are losing. So in my case, I keep going to my lectures. Uh, I go and see my patient early in the morning. I stay there. We have our lunch together as a, as a group. And we talk to each other, and we joke, and we keep each other together at the, at the, at yeah. the office. You know, you, you're a very beautiful person. You know that. That's why I have this great respect for you. You are really, you're more emotional than I've ever seen you. you, you you're really, you are really well, you know very, something? very emotional. Anita, He's with, about shaking with, with here. What I this know, man, I see with this. what this man is doing, yes. Yes. the time that I spend studying in Hawaii, then in the Pentagon, in Washington, uh, in human relation, building human relation, taking white people that felt that black people were inferior and therefore they cannot, they cannot be their lieutenant or their captain, regardless the fact that the white person was a sixth grade level education and the black person was a college grad. The race was the problem. The, the having a black woman or a Hispanic woman as an officer commanding a group of mixed white and black and Hispanic was a problem. You know, it took a lot of teaching, yeah. a lot of rehearsing, a lot of anger will come out. Uh, and we have to fight a lot of uh, myth. Yeah. There were so many myths on both sides from the, the minority side and the white side. And we have to bring all those myths out and say, guys, this is only a myth. This is not the truth. You know, but yeah, I want to tell everybody how they can contact you. You are there today, but then I just had an idea. Anyway. As a medical doctor. <laughs> as a medical doctor, right. Please, if you want to go to a, one of the very finest places for medical help, go to see Dr. Mencia at AGI Medical and Dental Centers. If you need dental work, whatever you need, if it's in the medical field, his phone number to make an appointment is 954-489-1345. And remember what he just said, he will be going to his Boynton Beach office next month twice. So if that's too far for you to go, uh, then you can go to the one that they have in Boynton Beach. And I'm not going to give you that phone number. Just call the other number and they'll get you there. If you need to be visited at home, they are they do such a great job with home services. And I don't want to forget Stonewater Med Spa. Um, this is the time that you need it more than ever to go relax, go get a massage. Relax. That's what you need. Their number there, though, call, make an appointment, 954-561-8799. And I am really glad that you came here this morning and you 
and you really talked about this because I think I know I needed it and I'm glad you did it. And I'm sure a lot of our listeners are so happy with this. So thank you, Dr. Mencia. You're welcome, Anita. Thanks for listening to The Wonderful World of Wellness with Dr. Andy Mencia. Be sure to tune in each Saturday morning from 7 to 7.30 right here on WSBR 740 AM.